Is Yuri Slavkovsky finally turning the corner as the former number one pick puts up two points in the 5-2 loss for Montreal? And the game scorecard shows he was the Habs' most impactful player. We'll be breaking that down, plus some bad news at EHC Cloten as David Reinbacher's head coach Jerry Fleming is parting ways with the team. Plus, we had a little Philip Meshar update showing he is turning into maybe a star. So you want to stick around for all that on this episode of Habs Digest. But before we get into that, I'm actually going to ask for a different thing today. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe. I'm going to ask for you all to hit the like button. It's not something I usually do, but I'm curious to see how it how it promotes the video. If you want other Habs fans to find our Habs content, hitting the like button is the number one way to do it. Let's jump into this first thing, Jesse, and it's Philip Meshar. Um, we'll get into the game in just a bit, so stick around for that, or you can use the timestamps to jump ahead. That is at your leisure. There's, But there's some interesting stuff to talk about first. And Philip Meshar, my gosh, the Ontario Hockey League tweeted, OHL points per game leaders with a minimum of five games played. Philip Meshar leading the way, Jesse. Two points per game. This is a guy that I think wasn't even a point per game in the OHL last year. He's a guy we've said, man, he has the skill. He shows the flashes the between the legs goals, but he couldn't put it together in games. But it seems like he's, he's finally getting things to click. You know, and Kent Hughes has to be one of the happiest people about this. Not only to see like a prospect doing so well in the OHL, leading the OHL two points per game, but then also having, you know, a player in Joshua Wobb, which is lead, almost leading second, you know, in the AHL with another player just kind of right behind in the top five, you know, and Sean Farrell. So really nice to see these different prospects kind of coming together. But what I really like to see about Massar's, you know, kind of development is that it, it kind of like, you know, the better that he plays, it really bodes well for his NHL future. And you would have to think that, you know, him coming to the NHL, if he's able to play a big factor in this team's future, there might be a possibility that he's playing on a line with Slavkovsky in the future, and they might be able to really help each other. Because we have seen that chemistry from them in the past. So, of course... You know, when one prospect does well, it's good for the whole organization. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. The Slovak connection, right? We already have lots of Slovakian fans. And if you're a Slovakian fan that's watching this, I don't know how many of you are watching this, but Slavkovsky scored maybe a few. Leave a comment down below. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, Meshar has been playing out of his mind. And I know he's a little, he's getting older. And, you know, as you get older in the OHL, the game does get easier. You got bigger bodies for younger, but it makes sense. But at the same time, this jump is almost unprecedented. Even a guy like Owen Beck, we're not seeing that kind of jump from him. Philip Meshar is it just feels like when you watch him the game is coming a lot easier to him he doesn't have to force anything it's just coming naturally when you start to see that you're like this guy's really starting to click at a higher level so definitely something to keep an eye on but yeah he is really showing out and uh as for another Habs prospect one that maybe hasn't been showing out as much as, as we would have liked this season as EHC Cloten, David Reinbacher's team has been struggling they've been outscored by something like 30 goals already this season they have not been doing well and uh and Jerry Fleming. I uh, he that I think that means he's oh, me. Yeah, he's there you go. He's that's probably what he's yelling in that picture. Um no, but he's parting ways with the team. So after a really bad start, and of course David Reinbacher was hurt and he's really struggled offensively since coming back. Steve, it's still good though. I mean a lot of people are saying he's still a very good prospect. Seems like he's getting a coaching change, Jesse. And I don't know if this is necessarily going to be a good or a bad thing, because we already knew Jerry Fleming had lots of ties to the Canadians organ uh, organization, but Hey, maybe a new head coach is exactly what Reinbacher needs to maybe get those offensive gears turning a little bit. That's true. So, you know, it's sad to see Gary Fleming go, but as we know, the Swiss leagues, it's a tough league. It's, it's a doggy dog league, you know? So it's, you know, obviously Cloten's not having the best start and, you know, we have to feel like maybe a change will kind of help Reinbacher, you know, and, and just the team kind of, kind of bounce back a little bit here. And because we're definitely, we want to, we want to get some, some more highlights coming from him soon. Yeah, I mean, it's been a little suspiciously quiet on the David Reinbacher front, and so there hasn't been a ton to talk about again. Like, of course, he had that injury, which is pretty brutal, but he hasn't been putting up any highlight plays, but you know they're going to come. So we're going to keep an eye on Reinbacher. Really unfortunate situation on Bolding over there, but the, hey, let's hope he turns the corner, and let's hope he's a star for Montreal for years to come, because we certainly need it, because... Uh... At least Slavkovsky showed out tonight. I mean, look, this was a bad game from start to finish. The Montreal Canadiens showed very little fight tonight. And look, the Boston Bruins just outplayed us. I know the Boston Bruins had a lot more days of rest, for sure, coming into this game. But at the same time, Jesse, it just it just felt like one of those hopeless games. I'm going to flash up the box. Where you can see Slavkovsky with a goal on one shot and one assist. Jonathan Kovacevic gets a goal late as he shoots on Jeremy Swayman, trickles through his legs, and he pots the rebound. Uh, that's his second goal in, I think, two or three games. He's been playing very, very well. Um, but of course, the big story, Slavkovsky scores. Let's talk a bit about Slav. 
Um, there were some moments this game where he was like, oh, he's turning it over. And actually, about five seconds before he scored a goal, I sent a message to you uh, criticizing Slavkovsky's play. I don't have that set up, but um, look, I'll, I'll, I'll take the blame for that. You proved me wrong, and I'm, I'm happy for it. But, uh, but Jesse, he, he's again just improving every single night. And what I love tonight, even though he only had that one shot. It's a shot that maybe he wouldn't have taken before. A short, uh, like a short angle shot, mm -hmm. short side behind the net pass from Nick Suzuki, right over the short side shoulder of Swayman. It was a nice goal, all things considered. I just wish he'd put the puck on that a bit more. Yeah, and it wasn't a slap shot like we saw in the drill that we showed the other day, but still showing that precision mm -hmm. on, on the wrist shot, which is really nice to see. He can really pick a corner. So, you know, this is big. You know, the, the big positive for tonight is that it's a milestone night for him. His first, his first game where he has two points. Um, you know, interesting to see that, you know, he had a big, you know, impact all over the ice as the analytics are showing. So, I mean, that, that's good to hear. Right. But I think what was tough about this game, Josh, like, I want to get your opinion. I think it had a lot to, to do with like the inexperience. Like, did this team kind of look a little bit different after that first goal? They just started playing like less aggressive. They weren't trying to like keep the puck in, in the offensive zone, like at the blue line, you know, they're, they're taking those steps back. Didn't you kind of notice that as well? Yeah, I, I really did. It was weird because like, as the game went on, you, you had some bursts where Montreal was almost too aggressive, like trying to tip a pie and then Boston would just get a chance to go the other way. Like a little, trying to make a nice move around the boards. Like Baron did one time and it led to a two on one, not a goal, but you're very right. It, it almost looked like they went down one, nothing. They're like, Oh no, no, no. We can't go down by more. We can't go down by more. I don't want to go down by more. And that was the the style they were playing. Now, look, I don't know what's going on in their heads. I could be completely wrong. It might be not what they were feeling. But, Jesse, we both saw that same thing. It was almost a, a tentativeness. Uh, they didn't want to overstep. They don't because I don't want to get beat again down the ice, right? Uh, I don't want to draw or, like, force them to draw another penalty. Um, but that's another story of this game, Jesse. The penalties. We were the number one most penalized team coming into this game. And that continued with how many again? Let's count them. Three from Govacevic. One from Ulan. That's four, five, six. Slav and Pazetta. Six more minor penalties. Um, just unacceptable, really. And Boston was able to capitalize on those chances. And Montreal really never had a chance. And I know we keep saying inexperience, but I mean, taking penalties, I feel like, like, I, I don't know what you change for that. I mean, these guys are just, it feels like they're just holding, hooking, slashing left, right, and center. <laughs> and the worst part about it, my friend, was just like, it was at the worst possible <sighs> times. Like, you know, we go down 4-1. Hey, let's let's take a good old fashioned penalty. You know, it's like just you know hard to, hard to get back in the game. But more than that, it's just kind of when you're already down, it's just that that extra sort of kick, you know, and everything else. Speaking of which, you know, I think we do need to address the fact of the Boston crowd kind of jeering us a little bit with with our cheers. You know, I know we we are a rebuilding team versus contenders, but I think Josh. We need to remember that, you know, in the future when when the pendulum swings. Yeah, the the Ole chance coming from the from the TD Garden there later in the game. I don't know if there's Boston even has a chant for Montreal to respond with, but I'm sure they'll respond with something that's maybe uh yeah, maybe less PG if 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 the Bruins come into town and lose again. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was kicking while they were down. It just it just kind of sucked, all things considered, right? And it was just another game we struggled through. Caulfield continuing to struggle to put things together. And the lines were switched tonight. That's something we got to talk about, too. It was Nick and Cole together again. But this time with Alex Newhook. And we saw Slavkovsky start the game with Sean Monaghan and Jesse Ullin. And, of course, Ullin and earning that spot after two goals last game against Vegas. Um, Slavkovsky and Monaghan, I feel like they didn't really get many chances considering how often the halves were shorthanded or on the power play. It was just kind of a, a weird dynamic. Like there was not a ton of time where they could really show their chemistry. But in the third, Slaff, uh, well, actually it was Dvorak that was moved up to that line with Slaff and Newland. And, um, but I like it. I like the idea that Marty's changing the lines around Anderson down to the third line with Gallagher, with Dvorak for the first two periods and Monaghan yeah. after. And again, I thought Anderson looked okay this game. He definitely had his chances to score again. Couldn't pot one in. Um, well, what do you think? You like the idea that Marty is kind of switching everything up and not necessarily keeping consistent lines because, you know, inconsistent lines, one thing we've complained about before last season with Slaff, but at the same time, if the lines aren't working, you have to change them. I don't know. What's your opinion? I think that Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon would be the first people to tell you that it's so important to nurture our first overall draft pick, you know, in your eyes, Slavkovsky. And I think this year we've done a good job of kind of moving them up the lineup, you know, to play kind of top six uh, sort of role. But definitely, I think it's so important getting the players with him that are really going to help him as well. And 
I think last year we did see some good chemistry with Sean Monahan as well. So I'm happy. And, you know, to be honest, I wish we would have seen it a little bit earlier on the season, but I'm happy to be seeing it now in a lot of ways. Um, and I think they need a little bit more time, right? Because chemistry is something that, that takes, you know, a little bit of time to develop and to kind of settle into a groove and everything. But I'd be, I'm very curious and, and kind of excited to see a little bit more of them possibly together in the future. Yeah, me too. It's it's very interesting. Hey, uh, I think the top three people. Are I don't have the game scorecard. I talked about. It. I'm sorry, I didn't have the screenshot. It's it's on Twitter. Uh, hockey stack cards on Twitter. Go check it out. Slavkovsky was number one by far, but then it was Suzuki and Newhook. And Suzuki and Newhook actually both had assists on that Slav goal. Of course, Suzuki with the primary assist for that beautiful pass. Before we end the video, do you think there's ever a chance that that line gets tested out? It's such a weird, wacky line. You got Suzuki, who's kind of like, like just just. Av like average build and then you got new hook who's a bit smaller but super speedy and then you got slav who's the big guy and a bit more physical it's like it's it's kind of like reminiscent of that suzuki copy of doc line but a little bit of a different twist that could possibly work especially with slav starting to kind of use his body a little bit more because that would be needed because you know new hook and suzuki both really good players but you see New hook that that size it can be an issue sometimes. You're pucking the you you know you're tipping the puck in. You're going in the offensive zone when you're a smaller guy, right? You know it's just it's it's a little bit harder sometimes. So having that bigger guy on the line, I think, could kind of help. Um, you know, I think as much as possible, it's like you kind of want to have two bigger guys with a smaller guy as much as possible on every line, just because that's so important in the NHL. And if you balance it out that way, then. You know, the smaller guys can thrive, but you just kind of need to insulate them those type of ways. But I, I would be curious to see that one as well. I do like Slav with, with Monaghan um, as well. So I think we'll probably see a little bit more of that first. Um, I think that Marty's, you know, now that he's tried it, he definitely, you know, he's going to want to give it a little bit more of a trial before trying something else first. But I mean, it's, it's something to consider and a great point all the same. Yeah, why not? Something to consider. It's it's a little interesting. I like seeing new lines. I like seeing Slav with Suzuki. Is what it is. Oh, also, before we end the video, shout out Jake Allen. I mean, look, I know he got shelled for five goals, but that dude was standing on his head so much tonight. Like, I don't think a single one of those goals could have been stopped. It was it was just one of those nights again <laughs> for Montreal. Shout out to you, Jake. But that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Help us reach 9,000 subs. We're getting closer every single day, and we really appreciate your support. By the way, guys, the last game thing where I asked you to comment for at the end, I saw like dozens of you guys comment that, so just just to know that you're all sticking around to the end really really appreciate it i'm josh goss for my co-host jesse blockett we'll catch you in the next one